Good day, everyone. I was born and raised in Detroit. Growing up there, I saw people like me running things. This is a courtroom, not a circus, so we're going to calm down. I'm sorry. What I found there was a passion that I didn't know existed. This is the bottom line. I'm excited to free fall into the limitless possibilities with we the people. So many are fearful of the law. They think it's something that works against them. I think you need to begin to accept responsibility for your mistakes. We are the people. Myla Wesley claims her snowboard was broken in half after she loaned it to her friend's girlfriend during a weekend getaway. Nia Summer says the snowboarding equipment was already defective, so she isn't to blame. All rise. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lauren Lake presiding. Please be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello. Thank you, Sean. Good day, everyone. Good day. This is the case of Wesley versus Summer. Ms. Wesley, you are suing Ms. Summer for $610. Is that correct? Yes, For Your damaged Honor. snowboarding equipment. Is that right? Correct, Your Honor. All right. And the defendant, you say you do not owe the plaintiff anything. Is that correct? Correct, Your All Honor. All right. Tell the court what happened. Hello, Your Honor. I am Milo Wesley, and I am suing Summers here for $610, as you stated, because we, I live in Denver, Colorado, and I invited my friend, Matthew, who is her boyfriend, up to my beautiful cabin up in Breckenridge for the weekend for all of us to go snowboarding together. How many? Uh, I, five people, but the important ones are the three of us. Okay. <laughs> the rest... The other two don't count. They don't count. Irrelevant souls. <laughs> All right, so you invited five people to a snowboarding trip. What happens? So we drive up on a Friday night, get ready to go uh, snowboarding in the morning. Uh, this is my first time meeting Nia, and you know we're all excited because Matthew's been a friend of mine for three, four years. He has never met anyone that he's super in love with or connected with, so I, I was excited. Um, Nia is a skier, which of course is totally fine. So we all drive up on the Friday and get ready to go on the Saturday. As we get there on the Friday night, unpack all of our things. Um, the summers declares that she forgot one of her skis, which, you know, it's a mistake, whatever. Um, and she's like, yeah, I'll just, I'll just rent uh, some new skis in the morning or whatever. And I said, no, it's going to be super busy. There's a bunch of beautiful, fresh powder out there. And the lineups for the rentals are going to be astronomical and the rental equipment will be subpar. So I said, why don't you just use one of my other snowboards? And that way we can all go up and have fun together. She said, no, I, I, I don't think I want to snowboard. I said, yeah, I'll teach you. I'll spend time with you. I'll, I'll coach you on some of the smaller slopes and we'll all just have a Good time. One Saturday morning came around, we all went to the mountain together and we were just, you know, having a blast. And I took her up one of the smaller mountains and taught her how to snowboard. And then I went off with Matthew and our other friends and uh, went down some of the bigger runs. And so you just took her up and taught her how to snowboard in two minutes? <laughs> I was with her for an extended period of time how teaching extended? her. A couple of runs. Run, How runner. long was she with you, Miss Summer? One run down the hill. So, whatever I, I feel, whatever irrelevant amount of time it took to get up the hill, and one time down the hill, which was equivalent to maybe 15 minutes. All right. So you went for one run down. Yes. And you were using her equipment. Her faulty equipment. Yes. It wasn't was faulty. Oh, the equipment was, you say it was faulty. I believe it was faulty. How is it faulty? Your Honor, I'm not familiar with snowboards, so you'll have to forgive me. I had never snowboarded in my life, but I do know skis very well. My feet were not secure to the board, and that was faulty bindings. I never felt steady or balanced on the board. So, yes, we went up a second time, and that is where my lesson, which was meant to be a two-hour lesson, ended at the top of a mountain. I'm not a snowboard instructor, but if but you were that her services but if to you teach me. are that uncomfortable, then why didn't you say something or say I'm not, you're an adult, right? You can make your own decisions. And I offered you my equipment so that you didn't have to A spend more money and B Well actually she was willing to spend the money. You talked her out of it. 
We heard your own testimony. We didn't talk her out of it. We suggested it because we didn't want her to have oh, to so waste all that time. I thought the other two people were relevant. Matthew, Matthew, her oh, boyfriend. Okay, her boyfriend and you. Yeah. You guys both just suggested just use mine. Don't exactly. buy your own. Exactly. Okay, so I, I would tend to disagree, Your Honor. Respectfully, Matthew has never pressured me into anything that I do not want to do. He could tell I was uncomfortable. I expressed no interest. In fact, I expe expressed disinterest in snowboarding. I'm a skier. Does That's anybody have any pictures of this? Yes, I'd like to equipment. present evidence. And so you are a skier. I'm a skier. Summer. I don't do either. So you guys have to enlighten me. She promised me two hours. I told her I was uncomfortable after one run. So then what happens? You, you After one run, you were uncomfortable. I was so why did you go on a second run? Thank you. Coming up. I started going so fast and I tried to veer off to the side so I, I don't hit other people. And at that point, I have a, a tree coming at me so fast, faster than I've ever gone on the snowboard before. And later. The sixth month, things began to change. How did they begin to change? What happened? Her boyfriend was cheating on her. We're back with the case of Milo Wesley, who blames Nia Summer for destroying her snowboard. So what happens on the second time? Tell me what happened. I was going down the hill. My, my bindings, my feet were not properly attached to the board. She was so encouraging on my first run that as I'm falling to my knees, to my butt, she's saying, no, no, everyone falls. That's normal. That's normal. Because so that's I'm, true. I'm normalizing <laughs> this in my mind, thinking, oh, maybe it's me and not the equipment. When I was up there on the second run, I started going so fast, and I tried to veer off to the side so I, I don't hit other people. And at that point, I have a, a tree coming at me so fast, faster than I've ever gone on the snowboard before. All I could do was move my own body. And the one thing that she did thankfully teach me was to fall back towards your butt. So as I'm pushing back to land on my butt, my snowboard goes out in front of me. And that is what thankfully impacted the tree. I could have been seriously so you injured. Went Feet first with yes. the board up Correct. into the tree. And it snapped the board in half. And That's it snapped how in fast half. I was And going. this is the picture that we're seeing right now. This is on the, the faulty monitor. binding. That's the board. Oh, that's the board. See where the um, feet clip in? There is a plastic element that attaches that piece to the board. And that was loose. And that happened after the accident, or that was like that when you put your. You know, it may have been like a small crack or or something. And were you physically injured, Miss Summer? At, at that point, no. I had what I would call like normal bumps and bruises from falling to my knees and my butt during those. But but the impact of the tree. You didn't have to go God, to the hospital. No. no, I did not. All right. So you get down there. You meet down. She says the board breaks. What do you say? Uh, I first, like I said, asked her if she was okay, and then I said, okay, well, you broke my snowboard, so. I human person and a kind person would say yeah let me compensate you for that i'm sorry that this happened this was at the end of the day so they we were ready to leave anyways i see evidence here for um the snowboard for four hundred forty two dollars forty four cent and you also submitted an invoice for the bindings for 168 dollars 75 cents this is the cost to replace i presume yes your honor all right miss summer what I'd like to know from you before I give my ruling is when you decided to make the second trip down the hill, mm -hmm. when you said, I don't feel comfortable, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to do it anyway. Was there anyone else with you? No, she had left me. So, so you just so, decided to go by yourself? Yes, there, there are other skiers and snowboarders coming off the lift, but they quickly make their choices and descend. So it's not like Yeah, but if you're so by. uncomfortable, you can also ride the lift back down the mountain you don't have to snowboard and they will at the chairlift they will let you back on and ride back down or you can call you know one of the patrols up there and they will escort you down as well or you can remove your snowboard and walk yourself down you got all the answers i got all the answers and, and, and guess what <laughs> The way you just rattled on, it immediately took me back to the moment that she just said, I'm going to wait for the place to open and I'm going to rent some skis. And I can hear your mouth just a going. You don't have to do that. All you have to do is do this because you can use my equipment because it's just how you just went on your little whole verbal exercise. I can see you doing that. And there's so much at play here. There are dynamics as it relates to the sport 
and doing something new for the first time. There's also social dynamics of her being the girl that's here with a group of friends that she doesn't know and just trying to fit in and having the peer pressure of, all right, well, I don't want to hold the trip up. Let me just do what other people want me to do. That's where you went wrong, Miss Summer because you had in your mind what you were gonna do, what you were capable of doing, and what you knew how to do, but you allowed them to coerce you and basically convince you that you're gonna be helped, all you have to do is, is get on this snowboard and go. So there's something called assumption of risk, right? When someone assumes a risk of doing something, then you're responsible for the risk that you take. I do believe that, and I believe in this instance, you did assume the risk when you got back up to that slope and went down. And the may no, I I'm done hearing testimony. Now, Ms. Wesley, I also think you assumed a risk, but a different type of risk. You let an inexperienced snowboarder, someone that has no experience, that you know has no experience, that you know relied on your tutelage and your teaching and your coaching, you did not spend enough time with her. And because you wanted to get along with your trip, you left her there with your equipment, not monitoring her or your equipment. And you were at fault as well. Because of that, I'm going to split the difference between the two of you. You both are at fault here. You both were negligent and you both deserve to have some liability in this situation. Judgment for the plaintiff for $305. Court is adjourned. Judge Lake has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant owes $305. Told you so. It wasn't all my fault. <laughs> Whatever. You're a mean person. Never have I'm kids. I'm not a mean Never person. Have kids, Never you have, don't have children. The patience. Yeah, Never you don't have, have the patience for teaching someone in kindness. Coming up. Did you have a lease, Ms. Williams? No. No, we did not. All right. uh, we are family, and we don't call the police, and we don't sign a lease. Oh. All right. Joyce Williams claims her nephew rented out a room in her home for several months before he left without notice. Marcus Williams says he was forced to leave after things became chaotic and a glass was thrown near his head. Good day, everyone. Good day. This is the case of Williams versus Williams. Ms. Williams, you are suing Mr. Williams for $750 for unpaid rent. Is that correct? That's correct. And Mr. Williams, you say you do not owe the plane of anything. It was impossible for you to live there anymore. That's correct, Your Honor. All right. So take me back to how this situation came about that Mr. Williams was living with you. Well, I own a three-bedroom home that I rent out rooms for extra money. Okay. Okay. Now, I usually charge $1,000, but... I'm still close to my family, so I allowed my nephew Marcus to rent a room for $750. Did you have a lease, Ms. Williams? No, no, we did not. All right. uh, we are family, and we don't call the police, and we don't sign a lease. Oh, all right. And I only asked for a few things. I asked that he get a job, don't be messy, stay out my business, and give me enough notice before he moved out. So and I how need much notice was that? One month. Okay, so how long did he live there? Five months. All right. Um, I'm gonna have to correct that that it was seven months. All but, right. Um, the sixth month, things began to change. How did they begin to change? Mm -hmm. What happened? Me and the boyfriend, um, my aunt's boyfriend, started to have a disagreement. Her boyfriend was cheating on her, and I Your discovered Honor. it. While he was at a bar, you know, I, don't, it, I confronted him about it. This case is not about my boyfriend and my love life. But it, this it case comes is about into money, play. and we need to play. go all the way back. Now, the second month, he found a job. I was so happy, and he paid and, and he paid the rent. He paid he paid the seven fifty. Now he's making friends. And he's throwing parties. Coming up. He was supposed to give me one month notice before he left. He failed to do that. I did, but I also did not plan on coming into such a chaotic environment. Closed captioning provided by. We're back with the case of Joyce Williams, who brought her nephew Marcus Williams to court over unpaid rent. 
So you paid rent the second month, third month, fourth month, fifth month. And then what the about sixth, sixth month? The sixth month and the seventh month, the mo the money was there. The rent was paid. In in the sixth month, the rent was paid. It was paid by her boyfriend to keep me quiet. You yeah. suing for seven hundred fifty dollars, Ms. Williams? Tell me why. He left without coming back. He owed me money. Why did I leave? I told it that she doesn't want to hear in, that. In a, in a very important she, piece of the, the story. The judge does not want to hear that. She, um, and, this, and this is what I'm dealing she with. She threw this, a glass. I, we're family. We're, mind you. And I threw, I, I, I threw, a, I threw a glass. It didn't hit him. I threw a glass at my boyfriend's head. And what about the time when I threw out a fork and came, you yelled at me because it, it was your favorite fork? It may have come a little close. To Marcus. Bottom line is, he left. Didn't it come back. became contentious in the house between you, your nephew, and your boyfriend. He left before paying on the eighth month. He owed me seven fifty. He was supposed to give me one month notice before he left. He failed to do that. And in the, and the, it's due the first of the month. The environment. What day did he leave? Um, the twenty eighth. So he left before the next month. Yes, yes, but Judge, yes. he and didn't pay for the next month, and he didn't give the 30 days notice no, you agreed to. No, he did not. Did you agree to give a 30-day notice before you left? I did, but I also did not plan on coming into such a chaotic environment. Judge Lake's verdict when We the People returns. Promotional consideration provided by... Mr. Williams, you agreed to live in your aunt's home month to month. Your Honor, there is no paperwork with all due respect. But when there is no paperwork and there is no lease, usually the court and the law assumes that it's a month to month tenancy. If you wanted to leave and it was so contentious and you didn't feel safe, you do what you should do. You just give the 30 days notice. Now your aunt had already given you a break. She never charged you for the first month that you never paid for, but you could have at least given her that last month's rent. And if it was going down the way you said, and you wasn't really paying it anyway, you should have just got that month paid like you did the last two and given the 30 days notice and left the best you can. For this reason, judgment for the plaintiff for $750. Court is adjourned. Judge Lake has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant owes $750. We did not have to do all this. We, you know, we, you know uh, I'll uh, have to take responsibility for it, but, you know, well, I yeah, disagree. Well, yeah, that's why we're here. I mean, we, I all you had to do, all you had to do was talk to me.